Hello and welcome back to Coral Blade Grotto. Uh, this is another reaction video. Today I'm going to be giving my reaction, my opinions, on some of the public claims that Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould has made. Uh, some of them are from the Reno seminar videos in 2018, and there's another one in a, from a video in I think 2014. Uh, the first one is going to be what he says regarding an individual named Colon Gordon, Colon Gonch. And the second section is going to talk about Russell's copyright copy claim on the grammar construct. And if you're familiar with what I'm talking about, then you know what I'm talking about. And the third will be Russell's claim of Postmaster General. Hope you enjoy this one though, and thanks for watching. In this part of the Reno seminar, uh, Russell talks about colon Gordon hyphen James colon Gaunch. Now in other videos and including this one, uh, Russell claims that Gordon was one of the three contract parties who was there when they developed the quantum grammar program, uh, their corporate construct. It was Gordon, Russell, and Colin David Ivey and Colin Miller, of course. And so he's gonna be talking about Gordon and what he thinks of Gordon in this video. This video is dated to 2018. It was the summer. It was after about a month or so after David hyphen Winkle and Miller passed away. And so this is what Russell had to say about Gordon, one of the co-corporate founders or whatever of the, his construct, of this construct. This is what he had to say about him in 2018. Uh, David and I, uh, and uh, we had a shareholder at the time, uh, an honorable man who, who lived up to his capacity within the corporate structure, uh, Gordon hyphen James Colin Gunch, until he could not, which uh, uh, we had uh, contracts in place and we'll, we'll get into the contracts. So uh, as you can see, he thinks of Gordon as honorable in 2018. Yeah, but he was honorable. They did make no mistake about it. Gordon Hyphen James Colin Gunch, when he was here and he performed, he lived to this and he lived it until he could not. So again, in the same seminar, uh, Russell's talking about Gordon, giving him words of praise that he's honorable and that he lived, uh, you know, what he said or whatever with correct sentence structure. This is in 2018. Now I'm going to play you something that is, I'm not sure where it's dated because the video has been, well, it appears to be whoever originally uploaded the video deleted it, uh, as far as I know. And uh, so I don't have an exact date on the video, but I have to say it would be around 2014 through 16, somewhere around in there. Okay, this next clip you're about to see is from around 2014, 2015 or so. And this is Russell talking about the same man, Gordon Gonch. Yes, uh, let, me, let me clarify on uh, uh, Mr. Gunch. Mr. Gunch left our program about six years ago. Uh, he is no longer w and will never, to my knowledge, be uh, back in our program. So that it's unfortunate that that video is out there. If I would have known uh, his his level of courage and his fortitude when I did the seminar with uh, Mr. Gunch, I would have never I would have never stepped into that arena because I'm a man that lives and does what he says, and and I I try not to be associated with those that don't. So from what he just said there, even though it is a little bit confusing which will be clarified here in a minute. He doesn't have really much nice to say about Gordon here. And he even goes so far to say is he doesn't want to associate with people like Gordon because he, Russell, claims to be a man who does 
what he says. Okay, well, thank you very much um, for that. I don't, I don't know what to say to that because you, you said to me that I think what you just said is that he is a man of fortitude and courage. No, that lacks it. No, he does has oh, not. He didn't have it when the when the when the fights came to him, he did not have the courage to stand his ground on what he taught and what he said, which is a bad reflection on my part of character, because I went into a seminar with him with the with the with his word that he would do what he said and when it was time for him show time for him to you know because he was always in everybody's always in the background go russell you know go i don't need your encouragement i know what i know and he was always one of those guys that was you know saying go you know you can do it you know and i in that and i can applaud that but don't come out teaching with me in the public view and have when your turn is to go step up to the plate you can't run a 10 day timeline and, and, and you were handed a lot of, you know, I, I know you don't know the circumstances, but he was given a lot of things that a normal, I've never seen given to a person to, to be able to stand his ground. And because of that, uh, I, I have no, no honor for the man whatsoever. Okay. Uh, okay. So Russell just said he has no honor for Gordon whatsoever. This statement is diametrically contradictory to what Russell claimed in the Reno seminars in 2018, which I just showed you, where he talks about Gordon being honorable. So this video happened before the Reno seminars, years before. So what happened there? This is just one of the many contradictions of where Russell will say one thing, and then in another video, he will say, the exact opposite of what he said in that video. This next segment is going to be about Russell J. Gould's story and how he claims to have come to obtain the copyrights to the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, technology. The publication that went out, you guys just all received a, a digital copy, uh, which is the uh, the venue was the Title IV the Title IV correct communication, parse, syntax, grammar flag, and the Leggett document contract, Federal Postal Court service federal court venue performance flag otherwise known grandfathering in as the title 4101.9 dimension flag the fee was paid for freight with the one dollar stamp in compliance with title 46 190 191 193 194 and we are the endorsement has been placed on the back because i disqualified the u.s military postal system i have my own federal postal military postal service station on file, so the endorsement's there. I've autographed and I've fingerprinted that for my federal post, and anybody can come and witness that stamp. And you guys can all take witness on that stamp. Uh, those stamps were registered in all theaters for the U.S. military, from the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean to the Baltic Seas, to the Pacific Ocean, and the different. Uh, Interesting that he uses the word theaters. The stamp was registered in all theaters rather than saying registered in all venues or locations, he chooses to use the word theater. Navigational locations on planet Earth. So my stamp is on file with them uh, through Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, and then the evidence is all bonded and attached is which, what we're going over with here on the trial. And the summons and the classroom file setting was put in place. Uh, which you all have got a cover page on that as well, which has the topics of the seminar. We've covered the Generation Virilities contract, and now we're going into the uh, Global Postal Union shareholders meeting on the uh, 6th of August, 2018, uh, which is Corporation RR8764621100. US, which is my 
copyright grammar lease for 300 years. And if anybody on the, else on the planet has a copyright uh, authorization from David Eiffelwinkel and Miller, at this time I'm giving publication to bring it forward within with a 10-day closure. Uh, but I know what it takes to, so, so this contract, how did I come about this contract, which, which is the copyright authorization for me to use the correct communication Farsi syntax grammar as the only person on planet Earth with a solitary contract from David for copyright release on the technology for the correct communication Farsi syntax grammar. So what he just said there, he's claiming to be the sole individual on planet Earth who has permission to use correct sentence structure given to him by David Wynn Miller. In other words, David Wynn Miller was the authority, according to Russell here. And now he, Russell is the authority because David's no longer here. While David was here, David was the authority. Keep that in mind. The FBI was there, this is all documented. Uh, we, the FBI agents all had claims of life with me. Uh, we did a, on the summer solstice, of 2007, uh, we had a sarcophagus burial for those contracts uh, conducted um, on South Pass, Wyoming. Uh, the Jesuits uh, uh, from the Jesuit generals out of the Vatican showed up. So we got summer solstice, we got sarcophagus, tomb, we have Jesuits. We have a burial ritual. What is this sounding like to you, the viewer? Does this sound familiar to you? This type of ritual or rite? Hmm. On my front doorstep over that. This is all classified in closure, but I'm unclassifying it for the relevance of this case. Um, this probate uh, or this look at case here that we're conducting today. Um, so in this court marshalling, I sent notification publication to my shareholder, David hyphen Wing Colin Miller. And lo and behold, when the green card returned, a dog, a Tom, or a Paul, or a David Wynn Miller, adjective, adjective pronoun, boarded the vessel. Well, there's no such thing as a David Wynn Miller without punctuation, because I have a claim of the life, as we all saw at the very beginning today. So, because a, a fiction boarded the vessel, and what he told me is that he was upset because the Clintons were upset about what I was doing, and he was under contract with the Clintons and the Rothschilds to do it, give them the grammar. And I'd like to point out to the viewer that you know, I've been studying this stuff for years. I've been teaching grammar for going on five years now, correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax grammar. I concentrate on the grammar, but this other stuff, like he's talking about here, I don't know if that's true or not. I have no way to certify whether it's true or not. This is just a story that he's telling. I have never seen a contract that he's talking about between the Clintons and David or between the Rothschilds and David or what the volition is or would be behind those contracts. Um, Russell's going to go on to tell you what he thinks the volition was behind those contracts. And in doing so, he's going to, he's, well, I'll point it out when he gets to it. It's going to be very interesting. To educate the top 1% of the world so that they could not perform for everybody else. So the bad guys or their performance, I'm not going to call them bad guys, their performance was using grammar to create a scenario to cause chaos for people that went under contract with these people. Okay. So what he's saying is basically that David contracted with Rothschilds and Clintons so that they could teach them, he could teach them the grammar, correct sentence structure, so that they in turn could use it to non-perform for the people. Which makes perfect sense because if the people don't know correct sentence structure and don't have live life claims, then of course the Clintons and the Rothschilds are going to non-perform because a live life claimant cannot contract in quantum grammar with a non-live life claimant. It doesn't work that way. 
And then he goes on to say that so that the, these contracts are in place so that they could create chaos. Now, the only chaos that would be created is through lack of knowledge and misunderstanding, uh, by my opinion. And again, keep in mind, correct sentence structure, because of the conditions of state of peace neutrality, rule one, rule equal, and honor and grace, would not be used for malicious purposes, and it would not work. If someone tries to use it for malicious purposes, it would blow up in their face and be a very, very bad scenario for them. Which, again, in my opinion, ties into the reason why you will never see it used as a system. Because pretty much the people who are in charge now of the fiction system use the fiction system to bilk society and the people that they consider to be lower class than them or whatever, the workers, slave society, whatever label you want to put on it. And again, this is my opinion. They cannot use correct sentence structure to do that. Number one, because in order to contract with correct sentence structure, you must have a live life claim. And number two, you must have knowledge. And I don't see it. So what he's talking about, these stories about David, they're his stories, of course. They're Russell's stories. Um, I have no way of certifying any of it. The only thing I look at is the grammar, which we're going to look at when we're done with this uh, section of the video. And I can tell you that if someone is saying things like this, that the grammar can be used to create chaos or hurt people, well, yeah, of course it can be used that way. But the grammar tech itself is pure. It's the volition of the person using it that matters. And the only way the grammar could harm someone, be used to harm someone, is if that someone chooses to be ignorant or chooses to participate in an assumption and a presumption, if that makes sense. And I would not be a part of that, but this is the reason why he boarded the vessel as an adjective pronoun. So when we got together in August, on August uh, 5th uh, of that year for our shareholders meeting, I questioned and was looking for this adjective, adjective pronoun. It was David Owen Miller. Uh, the FBI was there and it got violent. I'm going to be real honest with the world. There was a fight, an actual, because I know what it takes to get, you know, get anything. So as a collector, I moved forward with my authorizations to collect. Well, if you'll witness on the first contract of the original shareholders meeting, he had copyright release. Remember, he was not a postmaster general, which we learned earlier today. He was the copyright release on things, or copyright leaseholder, right? He, he could authorize who could use the technology and who couldn't. That's why you'd never get copyright released to anybody. So you couldn't ever collect. Okay, and so I turned around and we got in a fist fight. The FBI was there and, and as I'm literally beating David up, and this is physical, no doubt. You know, banking is tough love, for sure. Uh, as, I'm, as I'm putting the boots to him, he's looking at the FBI coming off the ground going, see, he's ready for banking now. And I mean, I'm just lighting him up, boom, decking him and dropping him. And I kind of felt bad. Because, you know, he kind of felt bad. Now, keep in mind also, Russell said that this was in 2005. Okay? He's my friend, you know, and we're in, we're in this fist fight. Uh, the witnesses there were uh, federal hyphen judge Melvin hyphen Edward Colin Gustin, who is the definite federal judge, not a fake one. Federal hyphen judge Alice hyphen Lee Colin Gustin. Federal hyphen judge Robert hyphen Ross Colin Cunningham. And shareholder Gordon hyphen James Colin Gunch. Uh, Robert hyphen Ross Colin Hanham sits at the seat of the judgment against the Department of Interior and the Bureau of Land Management in a case out of Casper, Wyoming, which he won in federal court and became a federal judge. Melvin hyphen Edward Colin Gustin and Alice hyphen Lee Colin Gustin became federal judges in their lawsuits against 
the Department of Interior and the Bureau of Lands Management. Notice he just said they became federal judges with their judgments. So perhaps there's an exception to studying for 15 years to be a federal postal judge or a federal judge. Maybe when you get a judgment, then you're a federal judge by what he's saying right here. Uh, I'm trying to get some of the criteria down, uh, especially with regards to the video with uh, he and, and Gordon, where he shares the story of the 16-year-old federal judge. As well as uh, another former judge in Wyoming. Was, I'm going to make, keep his name classified at this time. Um, and they are federal judges. They have, they, they, what that means is they could walk and chew bubble gum at the same time. Oh, so another criteria is that you must be able to walk and chew bubble gum at the same time. So if you can walk and chew bubble gum, then you're a federal judge. Okay. At the same time, knew about the grammar and could order the courts open and walk in and get judgments autographed. Knowing about the grammar is also a criteria to be a federal judge. So the best way to know if someone knows about the grammar is their claims mathematically certified forwards and backwards. We'll find out. Like I have from the clerk of courts. But these are not federal judges that just jump out there and take cases. These, these are federal judges that, that control their own worlds and use their, their, their condition of performance to be judges and judge themselves. So a federal judge also uses conditions of performance to be federal judges and judge themselves. In other words, as I've been trying to share in a lot of my videos through the psychology of this grammar, is that knowledge is authority. And if you have judge mechanic knowledge and you know how to perform in those venues, well then, what would you call yourself? If you have that knowledge, all the things that he's talking about, if you have, first of all, the grammar knowledge, the knowledge of postal mechanics, the flag protocols, flag mechanics, um, and also being able to walk and uh, chew bubble gum. These are judges that know what they're doing. You know, there's, there's not a lot of advertisement because the people that know use it for, for good for their lives. And I give them high honor. Uh, and Robert hyphen Roscoe and Haddenham, uh, he passed on, uh, but uh, Melvin hyphen Edward Cole and Gustin and uh, Ellis hyphen Lee Cole and Gustin, uh, they, they deserve much honor because they have been in the fight a long time and they have judgments themselves for themselves and have proved it to themselves and to them as federal hyphen judges for I concur with the mechanics of how you moved your vessels, claimed your cargoes and moved from point A to point B. It's done correct through 12B7 through 12B1. They know what that means. And, they, and they've authenticated it over and over again. So they were there witnessing this fist fight. So as Dave finally comes off the ground, he goes, all right. He says, I'm, I'm giving up copyright release to you. I says, I don't want. Okay. Keywords here. Where are we at in the story? Dave Wood Miller just got the shit beat out of him. Russell's letting him up off the ground. And David says, I'm giving up copyright to you. I'm giving up. So in other words, if he hadn't have given up, then Russell perhaps would have kept beating on him until he did give it up. What does this scenario present to you? Have you ever heard of force uh, majeure, I think it's called? Or as Russell and David have said in in... Uh, some of their seminars. War negates contract. Contract is only by consent. If someone blackmails you, threatens you, threatens your family, or physically assaults you and beats on you until you agree to give up and sign the contract, that is an act of war. And as they say, war negates contract. So if someone's forcing you to do something against your will, that contract is null and void. It's an act of war. Keep in mind, this is Russell's story. 
I'm going by his words, what he's saying. I'm not making any of this up. Russell has said war negates contract. And Russell's telling this story that he put the boots to David. It was a fist fight. And he let David up and date because David said he gave up. He's giving up the copyrights. To me, I want at least on the technology. I don't want it forever. It says I'd like it for 300 years. It says, and then I'll delegate where it needs to go next. I says, but I'm not going to, under survivorship, you know, your family's not performing. You know, it, we, we, there was a lot of criteria that we sat down in the Postal Union. Uh, at the time, uh, Gordon Heif and James Colin Gunch was still a shareholder with, with the function of the performance of the Postal Union. And so we sat down and we created this contract, which I'm, so I'm just giving you a background of what it takes or what it did take to get copyright released from David. Cause he yes, what it did take, what it took was a physical assault to force the copyright from David. If anybody else has a different viewpoint on it, going by Russell's own words that just came out of his mouth, please let me know in the comments. He was under a lot of pressure. You have to comprehend. He was working with different families around the world, giving them technology so they could non-perform for the public. And, then, and so he was under pressure not to let, let that happen. But, you know, you know, might don't make right, correctness makes right. Uh, I felt real bad about Dave comprehended, and he would just, you know, when, when he, when we, when might makes right, or might, might don't make right, correctness does. What is correctness? Correctness is together along a straight line, okay? Together along the straight line with the principles of correct sentence structure that's rule one, rule equal, peace, neutrality, honor, and grace. To me, it sounds like this scenario was as far from correct as you could get. They were not together along that straight line with that contract, with that transfer of copyright. They were not on the same line. Russell forced David to come to that contract and therefore might makes right in this scenario. So it's kind of the opposite of what he's saying. And this is you know, another example of him saying one thing and doing another or doing one thing and saying another, the exact opposite. When he finally, you know, got down for being punch drunk, he, he, we sat down and had a real heart to heart about a lot of things. And, and you know, he was like, well, now you're going to walk through doors that I can't go through. I'm like, yeah, you know, sorry. And I said, but I'm correct. Sorry, not sorry. Again, keep in mind, folks, this is his story. There's no way to certify any of this unless you go back and listen to the names that Russell mentioned and maybe reach out to those individuals and ask them to certify. Hey, is you know, do you remember this day on August 5th, uh, 2005 when, uh, you know, Russell beat the shit out of uh, David and uh, forced him to sign the copyrights over for 300 years? Do you remember that? You know. That's always one option. He says, yes, you are. He says, for you being correct and having the courage, he said, uh, never forget this lesson because the bankers are going to come. He says, and you're going to do what you're going to do. I says, hey, look, I'm going to be correct. And it's not about, it's for myself. And not about what those bankers want. I want, I want correctness in my heart. I've got to live with myself. I, I, I'm a true believer that we are a manifestation of that which we, what we perform in our lives. And, and so... We are a manifestation of that which we perform in our lives. And according to his story, he just performed a physical assault upon a quote-unquote friend of his to force him to give up copyrights and sign a contract to sign the copyrights over. That's the manifestation of uh, Russell by his own words. Again, I'm not putting words in his mouth. I'm, I'm having a reaction to what he, the man himself, is saying. But, uh, that's how I conduct myself. I that's how he conducts himself. Anyway, uh, so here's the, that's the foundation to this contract. 
That is the foundation to this contract. Violence. So to get copyright authorization from David, that was the background of this contract. So the world, other than the people that were there and the government, you would have never known what it took to get copyright release. And I tell this story because it's true. I have a couple of witnesses still with the claims of the life that are still valid to give closure to what they That's an interesting statement. A couple of witnesses with live life claims that are still valid. I wasn't aware, unless he means they have not passed away yet. That might be what he means, but they haven't passed away yet. But as I mentioned, you know, if you reach out to some of those people, certify what he says. Other than that, all we have is his word as to what's going on here. Witness. They were not on this contract, but they can give testimonial anywhere in the world to the closure of that fight. Testimonial to the closure of that fight. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the grammar of the first page of the contract that he's talking about here. So here is the first page of the contract that Russell was talking about. So if you look here in this corner, you can see the registered number. You see Russell's autograph. You see David's autograph. You see Gordon's autograph. And their thumbprints there. So let's look at the grammar. Is this a correct grammar contract? For this, now, now I'm going to use some honor and grace here. It has obviously been left and right justified, centered down the middle. So we're going to see, you know, we're going to allow some grace for some excessive spacing because that's the way the document was written. I mean, typed up. It's justified on both sides. So for this levy hyphen treaty of this, and now we have some parts scribbled out. So it's been modified right off the bat. R. Okay, we have a plural verb of the thinking, are. Is the cause, the fact of the cause of this sentence, plural? Levy treaty is singular. So therefore, the verb are is incorrect. The verb would be is in this instance. So then we have our possessive with this claim hyphen publication of these Muster masters, scribes, and key masters. Okay, so we have a conjunction here. Now let's jump ahead. We have a conjunction here. We have a conjunction here. We have a conjunction here. And we have a conjunction here. Do you see anything interesting about these conjunctions? One of the major issues that the Red Thumb Club, um, what the heck was his name? Gordon Schiller, uh, I think Mari Shapka, and some Muriel, I think. They would write me emails, and they would also tell some of my students that they were in contact with or anyone that would listen that I was incorrect because... I didn't put a colon after my conjunctions. And I created multiple videos giving closure as to how to use a conjunction. And I invited them to study them because I have my closure on it. As you can clearly see here, there is no colon or position lodial phrase after these conjunctions. And this was written by the shareholders of <laughs> the technology. In any case, to move forward, when something is underlined, it's meant to be taken as a whole, okay? So we say of these in this positional and lodial phrase positions this entire underlined fact, okay? So of these, blah, 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 with these minutes, of this, blah, 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 with these, blah, 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 
Oh, and then it has with these. So it has two with these. Yes, I'm aware that there's an of these here, but that's been underlined. So this is to be taken as a whole. Either it is or it isn't. Rule one, rule equal. There's no closure given here. So going by logically um, guessing that the underline is meant to be taken as a whole with these, and then we have with these, and then this is the last fact here. With these unity states of our world, which is to be taken as a whole, there's no authority to end it. How would you say this backwards? How would you mathematically certify this sentence? Because correct sentence structure must start with for the, like it does here. If we do this backwards, it becomes of these, of these unity states of our world, with these, oh wait, no, up here. It's another of these. I'm not even gonna go through it because it doesn't make any sense because it is not correct. It is not mathematically certified. As David Wynn Miller says, one zero zeros out the whole thing. And I just shared with you a whole mess of zeros, but we're not done. So then we have a number here, a tilde and a number. There's no position lodial phrase to position this number. So this number is basically a pronoun floating in the sea of space. And then we have four of these witnesses and then a full colon and then a whole bunch of space that has nothing to do with justification. Breaking the continuance of the evidence, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, nonsense. This is not correct. Same thing here with the one not being positioned. And then there's no hyphen between the, the A and the one. And then we have a full colon. So let's just go on since now we know what we're looking at here. We're looking at particles of negations in the facts with the word union, with the word unity. Uh, what else? Owner. Ooh. What else? What else? What else? In is a particle of negation. Another unity, union, and then we have a semicolon, and it's underlined. And then we have a break and it continues to evidence all this space right here. Same thing going on here in this next group of words. And then we have a conjunction at the end, and then a break and it continues to the evidence. So that conjunct, uh, going by the underlined mechanics and all of that stuff. It would just be one big pronoun. Actually, it would be one big verb because this precedes it. And then we have the uh, Gordon's section. And look, here's a positional as. And another as, and then a through. How would you read that? How would you mathematically certify those things backwards? And the sentence ends with, of this, there's no authority there. It says with these authorizations, and then it says of this. Backwards, that would be with this. There's no cause, there's no authority. And then we have, of course, the ING particle of negation, more uh, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, babble. So I've just given you a basic overview of some of the most obvious errors. There's a ton more that I'm not addressing for now space sake, for economy of time. I don't want this video to go on forever, but this is only the first page of this document, this copyright document for, for the copyrights that Colin David Eiffelwin Cole Miller was forced to sign. So number one, it's not a correct contract, not by their own grammar rules is the point I'm trying to make. I'm a grammar tutor. I know this grammar forwards and backwards. You can certify that by over the 30, 300 videos on my YouTube channel. You can email me. We can set up a consultation. You can ask me questions, whatever you want. I'll take the Pepsi challenge.
In this clip, I'm going to show uh, some questionable or contradictory things with regards to Russell's claim of postmaster generalship. Now, in this particular video, which was taken from the Reno seminar, he connects the registered number ending in 221 US with his postmaster generalship. He's going to literally say, my postmaster general number, uh, RR, blah, 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 221 US. He's going to say it right here. And my postmaster general number, RR, 294-568-221 US, was placed Let's on Let's hear the that again. Postmaster general number, RR, 294-568-221 US. So now, now that we've established that continuing to the evidence, that number is connected to postmaster generalship. That is a registered number through the post office. Now let's find out the story behind how he claims he got this title via this number. During my fights and trials and tribulations, one of the trials and tribulations that I became was a postal hyphen specter. I sent in the application forms for the U.S. Postal Service. Um, just a little bit of background. I don't know exactly what year this video is from. I just know that it's a lot earlier than the one I just showed. The one I just showed was from 2018. This may be from 2013, 2012, 2014. I'm not sure. Uh, these videos come and go on YouTube. Um, interesting note up in Parse of what he just said about Spectre. If you look up Spectre, the first thing that came to my mind was a ghost. It's a Spectre. It's a ghost, but that's from the 1600s. If you parse the word, it's simply, you know, from the Proto-Indo-European route, it simply means to observe. So that's what it means to be a postal hyphen inspector is to observe things. And of course, postal inspector would be not to observe things. The postal inspector, no specter. And I became a postal hyphen inspector as I transported that contract, which was my judgment with signed, sealed, and delivered. I registered it with both military and civilian, Department of Defense, all branches of the military, Federal Reserve, U.S. Treasury, U.S. Postal Service, and I filed for myself, and I got a letter back with a label on it for Postmaster General. I then autographed the label, which made me the Postmaster of the Postmaster Hyphen General. So he just said there, he autographed over it which made him the postmaster of the postmaster general. Let's hear that again so we're clear on it. For postmaster general, I then autographed the label, which made me the postmaster of the postmaster hyphen general. I talked to William Henderson, who was the postmaster general of the United States Postal Service. David and I spent three hours on the phone with him. After we both spent three hours out on the phone with him, he retired immediately because he did not have knowledge of what he was doing. They then brought in another postmaster, John Potter, who we went to go see on February 20th of 2003. When we went in the building, we sat up in the front row. I brought in some bounty hunters behind me who set up surveillance. They came in without me, and they put up their video cameras on. The so he came in with some bounty hunters. So it must have been just like a... a I would guess a private security team. Door for when the postmaster general would come in of the U.S. Postal Service. When he walked in the door, as soon as I was identified, he ran out of the room. That is a fact. That is not. So Russell is saying that is a fact. Now, I am not going to argue the point or contest the point that it's a fact for him, because what's a fact for him is a fact for him. But as far as being a fact. For anyone else, well, they would have to be able to certify what he's saying. In other words, they'd have to have firsthand knowledge, be in the room to see what he's seeing or see a video of it or something. Otherwise, while it's a fact for him, it is not something I personally would per participate with as a fact, unless, of course, I personally knew Russell and trusted him and we had a trust count and I knew that he performed with honor, grace, peace, neutrality, rule one, rule equal, um, then I would, of course, be enjoined to what he's saying because I know that what he, I could trust what he's saying. But as I don't know him personally, I would not do that. 
And this is part of the psychology of correct sentence structure. It doesn't matter, you know, whatever image you uh, construct of someone in your in your mind. If you don't know them personally, if you've never been around them or spent time with them and developed a trust count with them in some way, shape or form, you have no way of knowing what they're really like. Or, you know, whether they're trustworthy or not trustworthy. So this is like nothing personal, I'm saying, because I know some people are going to take this in a in a that kind of way, a protagonist centered morality way. What I'm saying is it's a fact for him. There's no argument. I'm not saying it's not for him. But for anybody else, for the proof of the claim is with the claimant. You have to prove it, not just with words, but with evidence somehow, some way. How you prove testimony. These are just simple judge mechanics. So he just said that's a fact. And he's going to go into a little bit more depth on that. Yeah, that is not reality. That is not reality, he just said. That is not reality. That is factual. As he ran out of the room, he jumped in the elevator, and my buddies jumped in the elevator with him, unbeknownst to him. He's screaming at Secret Service, my God, I can't even be in the same building as that guy. That's the Postmaster hyphen general. Okay, so there's the claim of Postmaster hyphen general. Russell's claiming Postmaster hyphen general. He's claiming that the fiction Postmaster hyphen or Postmaster general is uh, running and fleeing because Russell is the Postmaster hyphen general. Get me the hell out of here. I did not say these things. This is consequence. This is causality. This is what is actually real. So he just said before that it's not reality, it's a fact. But here he's saying it's real. So, I mean, I know it's speaking in adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun with the balance of the honor and the grace. Sometimes we say these things, but this in itself is just a small contradiction because if you parse the word real, you will find it as two syllables, R-E and A-L. Now, if you parse other words that rhyme with real, like seal, teal, things like that, you'll find that they're one syllable. But real is two syllables. And if you parse it and do the research and do the work, you will find it means no contract. Real means no contract. And then reality means a contract with no contract. <laughs> so here we go. This is um, his claim of Postmaster General. He said, and I'll do it again, that he autographed over the stamp. And I got a letter back with a label on it for Postmaster General. I then autographed the label. which He autographed the label. This is the label that he autographed. This is what he's talking about. I've provided continuance of the evidence that the registered number RR2945682221 US is Russell's Postmaster Generalship number. This is the registered receipt for that that he's talking about. Look at this right here over this bullet stamp. And then look at this down here. Would you say that this is a printed name? And then would you look at this and say that this is a signature? He just said in that video that he autographed over the stamp. This is not an autograph. Neither is this. Well, let's look at what an autograph looks like. This says autographs. This is Russell's autograph. Clearly printed underlined david gordon whatever but these are autographs this is clearly not an autograph this is a signature this is italic cursive writing so what does that mean for russell's postmaster generalship claim i will leave that up to the viewer to decide i'm just reacting to it i'm just pointing these things out these contradictions that i'm finding and have found not only in Colin David Ife and Wynn Colin Miller's videos, but in Russell's uh, stuff as well, directly tied into the grammar and those things that he claims. Now, he does claim that he, he is correct and wants to be correct, and that's his bottom line. Well, if that's so, then these are things that perhaps would have to be addressed, explained, continuing to the evidence. He says that this is 
a fact, not reality. It's a fact. But then he goes on to say it's real. And then we see this signature here. This signature, a scribbled signature in cursive, is real, meaning it's no contract. So you, the viewer, can decide. You can exercise your own psychology and your own judge mechanics, rule one, rule equal, honor, grace, peace, neutrality, and put this with the continuance of the evidence of all the other performances that I've shown in this video. And I'm going to make other videos uh, looking at some of these other um seminars and things and things that he said and david said and um we're gonna we're gonna really hone in on this and see what is correct and what is not with regards especially to the correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar i want to give you a little backstory on this video my tutor great friend and brother colin raven hyphen far hyphen tohiti colin frn and i'm and myself began looking into uh, Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould's claims back during the Reno seminars back in 2018. We looked at a lot of his documents and a lot of the things that he said in his videos, some of which are touched upon in this video. And I guess the moral of the story is you got to be cautious and very careful when you take someone at their word or just believe what they say without any evidence. And it's also a good idea to know what it is you're talking about before you make a decision. And that's sort of what happened here. The more closure I got in the grammar, the more advanced I got, the more I began to see discrepancies and inconsistencies in Russell's grammar and also David's grammar. And I also began to question the claims that I took for granted. Because back then, when I did believe what Russell was saying, it was because I was ignorant. I, didn't, I lacked knowledge. But then when I did get the knowledge and I got the closure, I began seeing a lot of dichotomies and inconsistencies. Again, some of which were touched upon in this video. So this is nothing personal towards him or anything he may have said against me or slandered me or whatever. I, I am aware that on his website, he has a page where he says that... Uh, I guess more or less that I am unauthorized. I'm not unauthorized by him to teach this, which makes sense because I'm not a part of his construct. To me, his construct is 100% fiction. There is no closure on the grammar in his construct. Therefore, he doesn't authorize me to teach his quasi quantum grammar. I, however, teach correct quantum grammar. I can certify everything that I say. I back all my claims up, my grammar claims, and everything, you know, the over 400 videos on this YouTube channel. That's my evidence. I don't hide anything. I don't classify anything. It's all available to the public for free right here. So that's my claim. I mean, if you choose to go into another construct to learn something that looks like correct sentence structure, but isn't, that's, it's your choice. That's the beautiful thing about contract. It's all by consent and choice. For those of you who choose to be here on this channel and learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, the correct way, I applaud you and I welcome you and I thank you. I'm very grateful for your viewership, for your participation. And of course, if you want to learn this stuff, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and I'll set up a confidential consultation where you can apply for a workshop. Other than that, thanks for watching.